So what is baseline image and why why it is useful and uh, uh, what are the how people can create those baselines actually. So baseline image is nothing but the ready to use operating system. You can say the ready to uh, ready to use operating system. How you can build a ready to uh, use operating system. So in order to build a ready to use operating system, ready to use in the sense it's not like a publicly ready to use. It's like a, your company configuration ready to use. Let's say, for example, you are working on a Java, Java Spring Boot application, for example, and the, you are going to use the Red Hat Enterprise Linux systems. By default, you are not going to get Java Spring Boot installed on Red Hat Enterprise Linux systems, right? And you're going to need more than 5,000 servers. Let's assume you're going to need more than 5,000 servers and uh, to host your entire application. For example, let's say your application is hosting a airlines uh, application or, or it is hosting a social media application like a snapshot or a Facebook or whatever, right? And that kind of applications need huge, huge availability because across the globe, a lot of people are gonna use social media, right, except to me. So that kind of, you know, a lot of people are gonna use social media. So in order to, when you log in and log out, they're gonna make tons of money. You know why? So they're gonna show their end customer, okay, we have these many users active. Each and every minute we have a 10 million user active. 10 million, million users active on their accounts and they're gonna uh, buy the ads, like they're gonna get a lot of ads and they're gonna post that ads in their social media website. That's how they're gonna make money. Let's say, uh, yeah, keep, keep that aside actually. Let's go back to our topic. So our topic is, let's say they're going to, they're going to use Red Hat Enterprise Linux system as an operating system for their 5,000 servers that they're going to launch, right? And uh, a Red Hat Enterprise Linux system. So, seven or eight, whatever you can say. So, this system should be, this should, system should have a Java Spring Boot installed, you can say, and also Git installed in order to clone the code. And also Jenkins user has been added to that system because Jenkins user must have access to deploy the jar or tar file on those 5,000 systems. And, and so in order to have all those configurations on the system, what you can do, you can, you can have a base Red Hat Enterprise Linux system and create an instance create an instance, it can be on-prem server as well. It doesn't have to be an EC2 instance. It can be on-prem server as well. So you create an instance and you can install Java Spring Boot application on this, Java Spring Boot, and you can install a Git, and you can add a Jenkins user, and you can add all necessary users you want. If you don't wanna, if you don't wanna have a default user, which is easy to user for, all Amazon instances, you can go ahead and remove that EC2 user because if you provide as a username EC2 user, you're gonna get access. Of course, you're gonna to have to have that key, but still you you know the username and which we don't like it. So we can go ahead and re remove that EC2 user. We don't need that user anymore. They're giving us a default user, but we already created a bunch of users. We don't need a default user. Okay, I can go ahead and remove that user. And also I'm gonna send all my uh, application logs to third party application monitoring tool, for example, Splunk. Okay, so all these 5,000 systems, I'm gonna send logs to the Splunk. Okay, let me go ahead and uh, install Splunk forwarder on this machine itself, because I'm gonna use this AMI to build those 5,000 systems so that I don't have to install Splunk on those 5,000 systems manually. Okay, now, I can go ahead and create this um, instance. I can install all these prerequisites on this instance. Now I can take an AMI for that instance. Okay. This AMI also Red Hat Enterprise Linux AMI only. 
rel ami only but it has a bunch of configurations right it has like a lot of things that the project requirement actually you can say and uh, this ami now ready to use ready to use to build these 5000 virtual machines actually otherwise it will be very hard for you to log into each and every box like a 5000 boxes and uh, you will have to install each and every configuration like a security tool and uh, create like a users and a remove users even if you do you're going to miss some configurations because if you are doing 200 steps 100 times I don't think it will be same. Let's say, for example, if you are making a chicken curry, right? And you're going to use the same ingredients. But I don't think 100 times you're going to have the same taste, right? The taste might change. It's, it's very similar. And what you can do, you can make a masala with all those spices. And you can use that masala. And you can make a chicken curry. It will be very easy for you. And you will have the same taste, actually. That's what I'm trying to say, actually. You can bake an AMI which is a one time, you're not going to make a mistake because even if you do, you are testing it. And uh, once you test it properly, then you are going to take an AMI. Okay, now you have your AMI, which is called, some companies call this AMI as a gold image. Gold AMI. And some, some companies call a baseline image. Baseline AMI. Okay. Now you can use this AMI to create your 5,000 systems, whatever 5,000 systems. Are you guys with me? Can you guys type Y in the chat if you are with me? So, so we have seven people on the call, except to me we have six people on the call. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, thank you. Now, let me, to build this baseline image, we can go ahead and uh, use any automation scripts because the funny thing is, you using, hey, why we need an automation script? Because it's a one-time thing and you're gonna do it manually. So what is the point of baking or what is the point of having an automation script, right? That's a good question because remember this, this AMI that you are using, this base AMI, rel8, they always are going to make updates to this rel8 or rel7 or whatever rel. Who are going to make updates? Red Hat people, right? That's why people do patching every two months, three months on, on all their systems actually. You know why? They are going to make changes to their AMIs every two months, every three months. Even at least end of the day, they're gonna change the SSL certificates so that hackers cannot hack them actually, okay? If they do make changes to the, this real AMI, base AMI, and you are gonna build one more image and you are gonna add a tag, okay, this image is January, uh, not January, December 27, 2022, and the next update is uh, February 22, 2023, okay? Let's go ahead and run one more one more time. Let me go ahead and run this job and I can build one more baseline image and send that image to security team. And once we get the necessary scanning, let me go ahead and use that AMI to rotate all those systems actually. That is the main reason people always wanted to use automation script. Okay. Now let me go ahead and use Ansible for this building baseline image. So. What I'm going to do, I'm going to install simple uh, git and I'm going to create a couple of users on this box and we are going to we are going to have uh, an AMI for that instance. Then we are going to go ahead and terminate that instance once that AMI is ready. OK, let me go ahead and create an EC2 instance or I can use I can use. I can use my terminal to create an EC2 instance. Let me let me see. So let me go ahead and are we guys? Are we clear, guys? Actually, can you guys type why in the chat if you are with me? If you don't get anything, please stop me. Okay, straight away. Okay, so let me go ahead and let me go ahead and open my terminal.
let me go to my ansible working directory cd ansible i have two folders do i have a create is it no not the point So what I do, instance, is it underscore instance. So let me go ahead and write simple Ansible script to create. So YAML syntax, like we discussed, first, first line is three dashes, then followed by one space, one dash, hosts, local host. Okay, then I can use tasks. Okay, inside tasks, I'll write task simple name create an EC2 instance, right? And uh, I'll use EC2 module. Okay, I don't know. I don't know what parameters goes into that module. I'm I'm not even sure what goes into that EC2 module. I knew that I'm going to use EC2 module because I've used it earlier. But if you're not sure. Let's let's go ahead and grab it from Ansible documentation. That's people does, right? That's what people does. So EC2 module Ansible, right? Ansible EC2 module, and this is the latest version. Nobody is using it because they are still developing it. So the 2.9 is a major version. These people are a bit crazy. Create an EC2 instance using Ansible. So what I'll do, I'll just use, it should be Ansible documentation, but I'm not sure why these people behave like this. Why would they change it to yeah, this 2.9, they made it disappear. I'm not sure. This, nobody is using 7, actually. I don't think people are using 7 at all. I, like, I, I'm not sure what is the point of having this. I don't like that hat at all. So, but let me go ahead and change the browser. EC2 module. To create an EC2 instance. I'm going to use say Ansible. Yeah, at least they have this. So let me explain. So this is a module. This is the EC2 is a module. So what it does is create, terminate, start, and stop an EC2 instance, okay? This is a predefined software, and who developed this predefined software? Red Hat, Ansible. Ansible people developed this predefined software, and they should tell us how to use it, and they are telling us how to use it, okay? This is a module. Now, these are the requirements. You will have to have Python installed on your computer, and you will have to have a boto installed on, on your computer, okay? And next, remember when we were discussing about CloudFormation stack, we did discuss how to get a parameter. We will have to go to their module documentation and you will have to check available parameters and you will have to find out what is a mandatory, what is not mandatory. And even you can use it if it is not mandatory, but you should use it if it is a mandatory. Similarly, they, these Ansible people have this documentation. You see that? It's a parameter, right? As in public IP. Required? No. Access key, secret key. Required? Mandatory? No. Count? Mandatory? No. EBS optimization? Mandatory? No. And uh, they, they have something. Okay, image. Is mandatory? Yes. Without an image, you cannot create a computer. An operating system, without an operating system, how can you create a computer? Like that. Instance ID is no, because you don't know the instance ID. And the tags, no. Instance type, yes. You will have to provide how much memory you want on that computer, like a t2.micro, t2.medium, and things like that. So all the parameters, available parameters, you will see 
for that module documentation. Each and every module has the documentation, has that this parameter box. So even this parameter box, little bit explanation, what it does and what this parameter is and which is necessary or if you don't use something else, you don't use this one, things like that. You will have everything there. So what I'll do, I'll just go ahead and copy some sample. Okay, let me go ahead and copy this sample. Okay, I'm gonna replace these values with my values. So these parameters, all these parameters goes into that module actually. You see that this is the module and whatever the parameters that you are using from that box should go either one space or two spaces. I use two spaces. Similarly, right here also, I use two space, right? right? So I use two space, but you can use one space as well. Okay, so let's provide VPC ID and let me provide public IP. And what I'll do, I'll just register this output and I'll show you why I should register this output, okay? So now the register is not belongs to any of the module. It belongs to a task actually. So what I'll do, I'll just register this entire output, something like I can call EC2 underscore output, okay? So what I'll do, I'll just change these values. November 2022, t2.micro is fine. What I'll do, I can go ahead and grab I can go ahead and grab the base image. Give me one second, okay. And let me go to EC2 dashboard. I can go to create an instance and I can just copy that AMI, that base image. I'm gonna copy that base image actually. Okay. Didn't I delete them? But I'll delete them right now. Okay, so I'm gonna use this base image, whatever image. Okay, so let me go ahead and use that base image. So I do not, okay, I do not have any group actually. Group in the sense, do you have any like a web servers group, application servers group? Do you have any group created so that I can add this newly created instance to that group? I don't have any group actually. So I, and I'm gonna need just one, one instance. So I can replace a subnet as well. Forget about these values. These values, you're gonna get those values from your requirement actually. And so my requirement is just to launch an instance with a base configuration. So that's what I'm trying to do. Now I can go ahead and use a public submit ID, whatever submit ID, and which is good. So now, so what I'll do, I don't know, I don't know, right? I'm gonna add one more task to create an AMI. Create an AMI, okay? And uh, EC2 underscore AMI is the module. But I don't know. I, don't, I, I knew I used it, but you don't know. So let's go, let's go Ansible to create an AMI, okay? It is the script, okay. Forget about this. You see that easy to aim my module. Create or destroy an image. Let's open 2.7. Yeah, at least they did not change it. <laughs> Same, 
each module has the box and each module has a specific requirement. And what I'll do, I can go ahead and uh, grab any of those examples actually. So, so what I'll do, I'll just use it. So this AMI, EC2 underscore AMI should be exactly under name. Name doesn't do anything. When you run the script, it will tell you the logs. I'll show you. I'll show you. Pretty simple and straightforward. Wait. Yes. This is a tag. No, this is the name of your instance. What I'll do. The so tags for your instance. Tags go under tags, actually. These two are the tags. So this instance ID, I don't know the instance ID, okay? But in this output, you will have that instance ID. So what I'll do, I'll set up a dynamic variable, name, set up, or get instance ID. I'll do just a set fact, okay? And instance ID, okay? So how I can get that? First, I will have to use Okay. What I'm doing is I'm providing the source actually. I don't know the instance ID, right? You don't know the instance ID until that instance has been created, right? Now what you need to do, you need to map, you need to map that instance ID, okay. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Just stay with me, okay. Output dot instances IP2 map attribute equals to ID or instance ID. The job job will fail, but it's okay. I, but it's okay. Let it fail, okay? Let it fail. So now what I'll do, I'll just close this bracket. Okay. And now I'll have to provide that instance ID here. Okay. Instance ID. But this is a variable, right? And uh, I'll have to provide instance ID like that. Okay. Now we have that instance ID and now we can create an AMI. But before that, I, I, I like to add a date, date to that AMI as well, okay? Even the name, I can give git baseline. I, I'm calling this baseline image for like a git baseline or Jenkins baseline or let's say uh, this application, I'm going to use this AMI for airfare hosting application. I can call airfare. Uh, so the name should be the same thing because it's a name. Name tag is the AMI name, both are same. So, and uh, meantime, I'm gonna set, I'm gonna set one more, one more variable, get a timestamp. Okay, so, Ansible, Ansible to print, current time, okay? I don't know what is date and time, right? I'm getting, I'm getting using the Ansible, okay? So this is the value, okay? 
so ansible date time iso because this eighty six zero one it's a iso standard actually okay so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna add and this to my playbook as a tab something like and i can say i can i'm adding one more time date of creation okay so i'm going to paste it here which is going to print the current date and it is going to add a tag, a date of creation. Okay. Now I'll add that debug variable as well. Debug. Uh, are you guys with me? Can you guys type why in the chat if you are with me? Don't don't sleep, please. Okay. You guys have to follow me when I troubleshoot so that you guys can troubleshoot. Okay. So now I have printed the date as well. Okay. Now once that AMI has been created and you don't need that instance anymore, right? What you can do, you can go ahead and terminate that instance because the purpose is you need an AMI, you need a baseline image for your application, right? And now you have that image. So there is no point that you need that instance actually. So, uh, terminate EC2 after instance creation, something like that. This description, this name can be anything. It's just for your identification purpose, okay? So, what I'll do, and I can use same EC2 module to create a terminate, right? We saw that, to create a terminate, to do whatever, whatever, right? Let's go ahead and I think there should be, there must be an example to terminate. All you have to do just state equal to absent, that's it. That can, I'm looking for that example actually. It's, no, it, it's gone. It it was there oh. a little bit up. Okay. Yeah. Right here? No, right. It's it's here oh, here. Okay. So all I have to do is just to provide this state equal to absent and the instance ID instance ID. My instance ID value is coming from different place, right? So, but what I'll do, I'll just go ahead and clear that syntax. If you guys look at all my, uh, this indentation, you see that when I use all each and every individual task went under same, same like a task by task, you see that? So that, uh, that iPhone, this iPhone tell uh, this iPhone uh, tells me this is a different and new task actually, and each and every task is independent in Ansible, unless until there is a dependent. For example, this task will fail if this task will fail because there is a dependency. You don't know the instance ID, but the instance ID is coming from here. If this fails, then this task is going to fail because there is a dependency, right? like that so once we have the tasks defined you see that this name is just a reference for the task what exactly this task is doing just to, just to reference actually okay what i'll do i can go ahead and run this vishnu vishnu there is a spelling mistakes for spelling mistake in the set fact for instance id okay. instance id Which one? This one? Oh, this is a, just a variable. Even if it is a, in, okay. Yeah, this. If one. it is, yeah. Uh, if you give that name, it carry. It should be carried over from there, right, Vishnu? 
Yeah, yeah, it will fail. Yeah, sure. This value instance ID, this value is different than that value. So it will fail. Okay. Now, what I'll do. Again, let's try it. Instance ID. This looks right, Manasa? Yeah. Okay. Now, what I'll do, I can go ahead and Ansible Ivan playbook. Easy to underscore instance. But yeah, man. let me go ahead and run this playbook. Of course, the job will fail. So, Boto is required. Okay, not bad. H Python. So what I'll do, I'll use interpreter. Easy to underscore instance dot YAML. So what I'll do, I'll set up a variable class. In that variable, I'll call Ansible, underscore Python, or interpreter. Interpreter. Okay, I'm gonna set up a value. So what happens is it is looking for that boto. What does that mean? Is we we saw that Python is mandatory on this computer actually. If you are using if you are using any of these modules, right? You see that in the prerequisites itself, these people told me. Hey, Python at least 2.6 and a boto is mandatory on the controller. Wherever you are running, you should have them. You should have them on your controller, on your box, the place where you are running. Okay, even though I have installed Python, but the Python is in different location. It's not in just a bin. There is one more, an extra path, local bin Python. And Ansible could not able to read it because it's in a different folder. Excuse me. It's in a different location actually. Excuse me. So what I what I what I had to do, I had to explicitly tell Ansible, hey, you should look for Python in this specific location. And I did provide that part. Okay. Are you guys with me? Can you guys type one in the chat if you are with me? Let me go ahead and run. As per my understanding, the job should fail again, but we'll see. Okay, now we got different error. Either region or EC2 URL must be specified. You don't know the EC2 URL, but you know the region, right? Okay, let me go ahead and uh, look what is the region, okay? Okay, so this is, uh, this is the EC2 URL. You are able to use character using blah blah blah. <laughs> Providing region is easy compared to compared to that easy to URL because you don't know the easy to URL. You know the region. So let me copy this region. Let me go ahead and if your job is failing on something, that that parameter, that missing parameter must be in that parameter box for that module. Okay. So what I'll what I have to do, this first task itself is failing because we did not provide a region. So what I have to do, I have to provide that region. What? Yes, is one. My region is. Yes, is one. Okay. This job again, I, I don't think this will pass again, but we'll let's troubleshoot. So now we got the different issue. So, what is the issue this time? Ansible connections, this is a uh, 
Okay. Validate provided access creased secret key. Hey, I'm running this playbook from my computer, right? If I do PWD, use the user's vision machine will training. I'm running this computer. I'm running this script from my local computer. How I can authenticate to AWS so that I can create an instance to AWS? Ansible doesn't know your credentials, right? And you will have to configure your credentials in order to, uh, Ansible will be able to read them so that it can make an API call to that AWS environment and based on the credentials, it will identify, okay, this credentials belongs to this XYZ account. Let me go ahead and create an instance in the XYZ account. So what I'll do, I'll just configure them here, AWS configure. I can configure access key secret key. So AWS configure, let me go ahead and get credentials. I have credentials somewhere else. I guess. Okay. I think this user is present, but let's see. Okay. Let me go ahead and get that access key secret key and I can configure that access key secret key. How did I get these credentials actually? When I create an when I create an IAM user, so these credentials will be provided, right? You can download these credentials when you create an IAM user. So that IAM user should have access to an AC2. So that IAM user based on that IAM user credentials, you can create an AC2 instance, right? I hope this Jenkins user. is available in that IAM actually. Hopefully. I'm gonna show you one more thing. If I, I had to create that access key secret key on that controller so that I don't have to provide them on each and every task actually. If I don't configure on the controller, you see that I'll have to provide that access key secret key in each and every task, each and every task that should be uh, communicating with a with the AWS API should have those values. Instead, what I did, I did configure them on the on the controller itself, on the server itself, so that Ansible can read those values from the server, and it can assume for each and every task. Okay, so. Again failed. Okay, this is a different issue, which is good, which is really good now. So now this is the instance ID. You see that? So this is the instances. Okay. I, I'll show you. I'll explain why did I write that Jinja filter to read this instance ID. Okay. So remember, in the first task, I had to register that output to a specific variable called ec2 underscore output, okay? Inside that register, I have a JSON output like this, okay? Inside the JSON, what you had, you had these instances. Inside that instances, you have instance ID or ID. Let's see, instance ID or ID, whatever. Let's ID, see. I see ID on the top itself. ID? Yeah. It says ID no, on the, no, 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 on the top. On the top, okay, let me see. Right. Yeah. Okay. So this instance ID, I did map it right, but there was some syntax issue. So what I'm doing is grab a register dot and this first, the first open bracket, this one, map, pipe it to 
and by map the value, whatever the value that you want, okay? Which is good. Now, let me go ahead and get that uh, syntax. Ansible Jinja filter to map attribute. I don't remember anything, do I? I work with Ansible every day. Do I remember everything, anything? No, been Googling everything just in front of you guys. So you guys do the same thing as well, okay? So now what I'm trying to do, okay, this is the map attribute equals to, I don't use my own, what we call, my own way to write, I am gonna just copy. And I'm gonna just use so that Jinja Jinja manipulation. You guys got it, right? You guys are getting it, right? This Jinja, you see that? So EC2 underscore output, which is this value. Okay. And then instances I just showed you guys. In that instances, map the value. Okay. That's it. Map whatever the value that you want. Let's say I have a multiple values saying ID, I can list, simple. Let's say I have a multiple instances created, right? For example, remember I had to remember, remove that count equals to three. What if I have that count equals to three, right? I can call ID. So this is going to print only one ID. What if I have a count equals to three, right? I'm gonna have a three IDs. What value this is going to bring? What, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna list all of them, okay? List, okay? And I'm gonna provide the list of values, something like, okay, something like this. With items. And where is the list of instances? This is the instance ID is the list of instances, okay? ID is the list of values. And I'm gonna call this escape YYP. YY copy entire line, P paste that line actually. I had to copy that line because I don't wanna delete that one. So what I'll do, I'll just provide something like item. It is going to loop all those values. This with items will have three values from here, right? and uh, which is going to loop with each and every value. But that's not what we want in this use case because I don't think you're gonna have a multiple values to create a baseline image. There is no way that you will have that, okay? So I'm gonna comment this, but I'm gonna share this code with you guys so that you guys can get a good idea. And I'm gonna remove this list as well because it's just a single value, okay? <clears throat> Run So this is going to create an instance. And once the instance has been created, and this is going to grab that instance ID and create an AMI for that instance, then once we have that AMI ready, this is going to terminate that instance and we'll verify that AMI with a current date and a time, okay? Now this is creating an AMI, okay, it's, it failed, okay? We'll see why this is failed. Okay, now, okay, so this is taking, this is taking this as a list, you see that? This is taking this is an instance ID value, which is not an instance ID. The instance ID is just this one, okay? So what I'll do, I'll go back to our previous use case actually. Okay, so I'll just simply, this time we're getting only one, so. I'm gonna pipe it to list, list. I'm gonna call 
on it um it won't change anything because i'm i have only one in that one value in that with item so i don't think it it makes any difference actually if i do have a three four items i mean three four instance ids i'm going to create three four baselines but you cannot create three four baselines at one time there is no way that you are going to need three four baselines in one time and which is going to fill here as well so what i'll do i can go ahead and change it to here as well instance sorry okay so what i'll do here i'll just provide item just wanted to make sure that i'm using the right syntax okay let me go ahead and run it again <laughs> I think this playbook ran three times successfully for one task, the first task. So this playbook might have created three or four instances already. So what I'll do end of the day, after the end of this task, I'm gonna terminate all of those. Uh, I'm gonna terminate all of them, okay? So now, which is creating an instance. Okay, creating an AMI. So we'll go ahead and verify that AMI with the time tag, timestamp tag. And, but the funny thing is, I did say that Git baseline, but did I install Git on it? I don't know. Did I install Git on it? That's a funny. So what I'll do, I'll just Ansible script to run user data okay let me go ahead and copy that so what is uh ansible user data user data parameter something like that okay something like that Okay, so how to run user data when we create an instance? I know how to run it, but just wanted to show you guys, okay? So, This time I didn't miss Ansible. So what I'm gonna do, I wanna add Ansible at that end. Okay. So now I'll go ahead and I'm gonna use this is one of these actually. Right here I can provide something like right here okay this user data defined something like this user data dot sh but i'll just so this is the this is the prerequisites that they are trying to install but what i'll do i'll just provide user data something like this i'll run it very small basic one okay let me copy this user data It's still creating an AMI. Okay. Let's go ahead and verify whether that AMI being created or not. Let me go ahead and AMI. AMI inside this easy to dashboard only. So I go to AMI. What is that AMI? Public images, not public, owned by me. Let's take it as owned by me. Is there any 
a my b greater get s r date okay no date get base line no get base line okay airfare app right this is the one this is the one we are trying to create right okay this is available okay if i do select this airfare app right let me select this airfare app okay let's go to tags this you see that <clears throat> date of creation today 2022 12 27 23 25 31 which is uh, which is uh, 23 means 5 hours ahead which is 11 o'clock right 11 o'clock 11 25 which is a utc so this ami is being created this ami is called a baseline image gold image for this airfare app so whenever they they wanted to use they wanted to launch an instance what they'll do they'll write a task to gather facts first gather ami facts this time and once they have all amis in that facts they will they will filter based on this tag based on this date tag and a name tag if both matches their criteria they can go ahead and grab this ami and they can use this AMI when they create an instance. Are you guys with me? Can you guys type Y in the chat if you are with me? Okay. This is failed. The reason why this is failed is same. Either region or URL must be specified. What I'm going to do, I'm going to make a couple of changes to this playbook. Okay. Instances. So I'm going to provide... Gonna provide region yes east only. Okay, so what I will do to terminate instances, I I, I want to terminate all instances, right? Not only one. So because I don't need any instances. So I can gather facts and name get all instances to terminate right? and uh, easy to instance underscore info is a module. I know that module because I've used it, but if you don't know the module, Ansible module to gather instance facts. Easy to instance facts. Okay, so let me go ahead and choose this. Is this instance facts? They have changed it to instance info. So what I'll do, I'll select new version i can go ahead and choose 2.9 they've changed it to instance metadata seriously they've changed it to ec2 instance info i'm not sure why this red hat people take all this money but they don't even provide the good value for their customer but it's okay that's not our problem so let me go ahead and is it to instance underscore info? Okay. This is a easy to instance underscore info. Okay. Now what I'll do, I'll just get that instance info. I can just register the results. Okay. And once I have that register, let me see. So if I don't provide region, it, it will fail as well. I know that. So yes, east one. Okay. 
register. I can call this results. Okay. Now, because I have a number of instances, right? I said name grab all instances to formula. Okay. And I can set factor variable. Because it's a dynamic, you don't know list. I can say list of IDs. I can call something like that. You don't know those list of instances, right? So that's why you, what you're doing is you're just adding that results, mapping, mapping that variables actually. And of course, you are going to know that instances, okay, map, map it to attribute equals to here i think it will give instance underscore id but we can verify that so i can be wrong i know this because i've used it so so Now I wanted to terminate all these instances, not this instances actually. So this is only one instance, right? But I wanted to terminate all of them. So list of IDs. So this task will run based on this actually, based on this. So this, I did not provide a specific criteria. So what it will do, it will grab all instances that are available in this region and it's going to add a list of IDs to this variable and I'm providing this variable in the list of items so it can terminate one item at a time. Are you guys with me? Can you guys type Y in the chat if you are with me? And the meantime, the meantime, let me save it. In the meantime, what I'll do, I can go ahead and add user data to this module. I'll write a simple what did I see in that user data? Where is that? Okay, right here. User underscore data. So user underscore data okay i can call i'm not going to use so much shell script actually so what i will do i can call sim like this so this one something like I will start again, I will start back. Okay, sample shell script actually. How can you start a shell script actually? Let me go ahead and look at here. First hash, then followed by exclamation point. Okay, let me go ahead and use first hash followed by exclamation point, forward slash bin. Or it has bash. Okay. Sudo yam install git dash y. Okay. Sudo yam install java <clears throat> dash one dot eight uh, dash y. What this will do, this will install. 1.8 after that any sub point it will install java 1.8 okay and sudo add user changes it will add, add a username for the changes okay so let's say this is our base now what i'll do i can go ahead and run this this will this should terminate all our instances as well okay so this should create a different, okay, let me change. Let me change that instance, not instance, say my 
Amen. 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 Autopilot. Autopilot. Program. Let's say autopilot. Program. Uh, that's so great, actually. They're helping us with a lot of safety features, actually. So we can just try to run it. Compared to the social media transactions, people who are working in the banking industry and uh, airlines industry and uh, and uh, healthcare industry and automobile industry, they are really, really great compared to people who are working in a stupid Facebook and Instagram or whatever. Because it makes things a lot, of e a lot easier for everybody across the globe. You can travel, you can travel to all the way other side of the globe within 24 hours. It's not easy without a software engineer actually. So, I would definitely say that. So now this should create an AMI with a different name and uh, this should change that time as well. It was 11.25, now it's more than 11.30. So the timestamp should be after 11.30 and the a name of that base anime should be autopilot. The old AMI exists actually. We are, not, we are not destroying or we are not deleting any old AMI. It stays there. People can keep last three, four baseline images because let's say they create a new new gold image. If something goes wrong, let's say they have released new Red Hat Enterprise Linux version. Okay, they released it for production and they they will excuse me they so they 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 came to us and they, they told us like okay this AMI is ready to use. You can go ahead and pick it and use it. After two weeks, they found an issue. And they'll they'll come and hey we found an issue, and uh, can you guys please roll back? And if you destroy your old gold image, and uh, how can you roll back? Again, you are gonna build a new image with the old version, and uh, I'm not sure even if you do, and I don't think it will be the same one. So that is why they can keep like up to four or five, four or five gold images actually. So just wanted to uh, let you guys know actually. These are all like a real time scenarios. This is what DevOps engineers or Linux administrators does in, de in their day to day activities. Other than this, the troubleshooting, creating users, modifying user permissions. Users complain like, okay, I, I, I'm not getting access to this jump server. I'm, I'm getting access denied. What you will do, you will go ahead and uh, uh, log into that server. If you are a Linux administrator at your organization, you you are going to be a root user. You can go ahead and log in and you can verify the data set case, authorized case. You make sure that he he's uh, uh, public key over there and you make sure that his user account not locked. You you do verify those simple, simple steps, which will take like a less than five, 10 minutes actually. So that's that's your supportive work, but this is your actual work. Now we are accelerating with a like a new technologies with the cloud formation, Terraform, and Ansible, and a little bit Shell, and so many new things actually. Are you guys with me? Am I making you guys sleepy? I know it's getting late, but give me, give me just just another 10, 15 minutes, okay? Can you guys type Y in the chat if you're with me? Let me go ahead and uh, verify the new image. Let me just go ahead and uh, select autopilot. Yeah, there you go. So this is still pending. Instances like AMI is being created. But let's see if we have those tags updated. No, since it's still pending. Uh, 
Okay. So it's still not ready yet. Still, this AMI is still being created. Now you might have a question, hey, so when when we are trying to create an instance ID, when we're trying to create an AMI, then what is the point of taking a snapshot? This in this time, this time now the AMI is being created for like a 10 minutes, right? Example. This 10 minutes, the server is going to be in down state. It's a stopped state. The server won't be available for the end customer. So that is the main reason. That is the main reason people use snapshots. Because snapshots uh, back up like EBS volumes. But when the snapshot, like when the EBS volume backed up, instance won't be in down state actually. It's up and running. So everybody can access. 99%, like 100% of the companies, they use multiple EBS volumes for a single instance, actually. They don't use one EBS volume for 500 GB. They use five EBS volumes, each 100 GB instead. So that if you are taking backup for one EBS volume, four EBS volumes are available, still serving to the end customer. You guys with me? Can you guys type Y in the chat if you're with me? And I think this has deleted all our unnecessary instances as well. One. And uh, so this is two, and uh, this is one more, three, and uh, four, and five, six. You see that we have uh, six instances, and all of them being deleted. Okay. Vishnu, does it does it terminate um, stopped instances as well? Yes, yes. Once okay. that AMI is ready, yes, it will. Uh, it will because you did not you did not say anything in your uh, in your gathering facts. Let me show you what what I will what I'm talking about. So, because you did not say anything over here, you did not write any condition here actually. What you just told, grab all instances info which are in this region. That's it. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Here I will mention, okay, I need to specify using filter, a specific tag, are only running instances, are only stopped instances. Then it would look for that specific criteria and it would uh, gather, it would fetch the metadata for those specified instances only, and it would add that instances IDs to this list, and we would pass that list here, and it would delete one at a time. Okay, this is uh, this is absolutely end-to-end -end script to create a baseline image if you are using Ansible. I don't, I don't see, I don't think there will be any like any uh, anything that you need to write maybe you might add a different tax here or you might you might use a different instance like a base image ID or that's it you might you might be working with a role not like individual playbook I just I just wrote an individual playbook but you might be working with a role you are adding all these tasks inside task folder and you'll be creating a playbook and you'll be just calling that role inside that playbook that's it. Other than that, this is end to end. This is use case, and you're gonna, you're gonna take. Give me one second. Just to give me one second, actually. Okay, so so other than this, 